What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about front wing aerodynamics in a wake. So for racing cars, often there is a front wing kind of setup and you will be traveling behind a car or many cars, at least at some points during a race. So how does the wake of an upstream car affect the downstream front wing setup? And secondly, how does the distance from the ground of this front wing setup affect how susceptible it is to this wake? So there are many different effects from the forces like the lift and drag and the coefficients to the flow physics, and we're going through these ones. So first of all, let's say we have an upstream car, and it doesn't really matter too much right now what its setup is. It doesn't matter whether it really has a diffuser or not, or a front wing or whatever. Let's just say it's a car, so it's just a regular dirty wake that's coming off of this car. And then we have a downstream car, which has a front wing setup, so a front wing here, and this is just a single element. And they're separated by some kind of distance. Let's say it ranges from zero to two car lengths downstream, where L is this length here. So to begin with, putting the wing in the wake of another car will generally reduce its effectiveness. So that's just a general trend. But in terms of the ride height, this is quite interesting. So if you didn't have anything upstream and you just put this this wing lower to the ground, you then induce ground effect, which is a common phenomenon throughout all, all aerodynamics, not just automotive, but also aerospace and aeronautical as well. So the wing will produce will produce more downforce or lift depending on how it's cambered, but here more downforce and also a bit more drag. And as you get the weight coming off of this car here, that actually messes with this ground effect. So if this wing is higher up, it will be affected more by this car's wake than the ground effect and actually sort of reduce the ground effect that you'll be getting. And if you put this wing closer to the ground, it actually gets out of, it actually doesn't get out of the dirty flow as much potentially. It can, but maybe not, but it actually induces this ground effect more and that kind of overrides this dirty wake's effect. So you then start to become less susceptible to this dirty wake by putting in this lower, not just because you're getting out of it potentially, but also because you're inducing this ground effect. So the putting this, this airfoil higher means that you're more susceptible to the wake of this car. And generally speaking, putting this closer to the ground as opposed to higher, you can induce lift and drag coefficient, sorry, downforce and drag coefficients about 100% higher than putting it higher up in from the ground. And if you were to have this dirty flow then, then this would kind of reduce by up to about 50%. So if you put this very high and you have a very draggy, uh, a very dirty wake from here, that will mess with the ground effect and probably drop it by about half of what you would usually get without having this car upstream. Now, what about if we have a more aggressive setup? So let's say we have a really aggressive diffuser and we have a, a wing here or whatever, and it's really kicking the flow up. That then exaggerates the effects of ground effect. So what about the length, the distance between this upstream car and downstream car? How does that affect this front wing setup? Well, surprisingly, it's not actually that susceptible when you're fairly close to the car. So between zero and two car lengths or three car lengths downstream, putting this car further and further downstream doesn't really affect the lift, the downforce and the drag that much. Like you might get about a 20 to 50% change, but considering that you might be getting that much of a drop from this car, it's not really that, that beneficial. So you need to go even further downstream. So if you're very close to the car compared to uh, two car downstream, this dirty wake is still impacting your front wing quite a lot. So you need to go much further downstream. Now, in terms of the flow physics, generally speaking, the dirty weight coming from this upstream car can be beneficial to this airfoil under certain circumstances, but usually not. So the beneficial case is, let's say you have this front wing and there's some kind of laminate to turbulent transition on it, but you want to accelerate that transition. Well, the dirty weight here is going to impact this airfoil and make it transition much sooner. So instead of maybe here, it might be here. And even maybe even at the trailing, at the leading edge, if it's very dirty. So that means that you have a fast moving boundary layer, which means you can do more with the flow. Now that's at the best case scenario. In generally speaking, if let's say we're looking down from the top and we have this car, I've truncated it, but whatever, and it's producing downforce, we then get vortices over it. And these vortices travel downstream and hit this rear wing. Now these vortices are gonna be inducing flow in different directions. So in the middle here, because the vortices are kicking up in the middle, both of them, it's gonna be pushing the flow higher up. On the edges, it's gonna be pushing them down into the page. So 
that means we're going to get different angles of attack effectively over this wing, which means that different parts of the wing are going to produce more or less downforce than what they usually should be producing. And that can also result in different loadings on the wing. And that also then messes with how much downforce you can produce. So let's say you're right behind this car and you have these vortices doing this to this wing. Now that you transpose this wing over here, and all of a sudden now this vortex, which is going to be hitting here, you're getting upstream kicking here, uh, like upflow on the edge now on the wingtip and down on the middle of the wing. So that then affects what the effective angle attack is now on around this wing, just because you've now changed how this wing is positioned compared to the upstream car. Now in terms of lateral separation bubbles, which are a very common phenomenon, the dirty flow is very good at getting rid of these LSBs because they transition the flow much sooner. So those are the main effects on the flow physics of this wing and then the general effects of uh, the downforce and the drag and the effects of putting this car closer or farther away from this upstream car and also the, the height. So that's the end of this video. If you'd like to make sure to click the like button and subscribe button and we'll see you on. Peace amigos.